So in today's War Thunder video, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be going over some top tier weak spots whenever it comes to top tier tanks. The thing about top tier though is that there's so many rounds now whenever it comes to different guns and as well as the different calibers that it's kind of hard to actually just make a video on the weak spots of different tanks because each round basically has its own different weak spots. So in this video, we're just going to be covering what are the basic ones that everything should be able to pin. So to start off this video, we're going to be looking at the Abrams because the Abrams, they do have different variants of their tanks. As we can see here, we have the M1 Abrams. We also have the M1A2 SEP Abrams, and then we have the M1A1 Abrams. Really, the differences between these vehicles are the M1 Abrams that we're looking at here has the least amount of armor. This one will have the most amount of armor, and pretty much everything in the game could not pin its cheeks whenever it comes to APFSDS. And then the M1A1 is just a little bit more armored than the M1 Abrams, but since there's so many new rounds within the game now, special stuff like 3BM60 and all kind of rounds that can just pin it, it can easily go through the turret cheeks of the M1 as well. So the reason we're using the T72B is because it has actually two APFSDSs, which are kind of completely different you know compared to what they are so it has 3bm22 which is kind of a low tier apfsds it does not have a ton of angle pin but whenever we go to the 3bm42 it maybe will not have as much you know like like it doesn't have a huge amount of you know zero degree pin but it does have a ton of angle pin which is just in general better so the abrams really they all have pretty much the same weak spots but the thing about top tier is that depending on what round you have you can actually have different sort of weak spots so as we can see here there's an abrams right now we have three bm 22 loaded we're not going to be able to pin that so that's just a regular abrams like it does not have a ton of armor we're not going to be able to pin its turret cheeks now we can pin this which is going to be for every single abrams as we can see even the m1 a2 sep once we get a reload in even though it says red i don't i'm not sure why it does that but even that thing we can pin with three bm 22. Now, the thing about the M1 Abrams is, is now we're loading 3BM42, which has this pin, can easily go through the turret cheeks of the Abrams itself. Same thing with the M1A1 over here. It does not have a ton of armor whenever it comes to its turret cheeks, so 3BM42 can pin it as well. So if you want a general guide on where to aim whenever it comes to Abrams, there's three areas to really aim for. You have the lower plate, which I've showed you before where you can pin. You have the turret ring which is about right here which pretty much will kill the tank pretty much every single time whenever you shoot it and then you have a weird one which is kind of funny enough to actually talk about whenever it comes to this vehicle is is, is if you load HE right here and you see that it has this crow's nest on top if you just aim for this portion right here it kills the tank as well so that's really the weak spots of the Abrams they have kind of three you have the lower plate the turret ring the breach and then you have the HE spot if you ever really want to use it so the next series of tanks that we're going to be looking at is the T-64B, the T-90, and as well as the T-72 terms. Basically, all these vehicles have the same exact weak spots. Even the T-80s that we don't have here currently, they basically get killed the same way as a T-64B would, especially if you do not have the correct rounds. The T-90 is the same, and as well as the T-72 variants are the same as well. So the way that you actually kill these types of tanks is you have three weak spots from the front. If you're from the side, you definitely want to aim for the carousel, which is on the bottom of the tank. But you have the lower plate, you have a driver's hatch, and then you have the gun breach and as well as just a little bit above the gun depending on what kind of rounds that you have. So there's three types of you know ways to actually kill these types of tanks within War Thunder and they all basically do the same thing. The only thing about it is, is that you have rounds like the like this vehicle that we're using now is the Wolfpack which has M900 and as well as M774. We have M774 loaded right now and it would not be able to pin the actual you know upper hole of a T64B. And it won't pin the T-72A either. So the the reason that I want to say that you should always shoot for these, you know, like weak spots is because even though you can load M900 and you can just do this and you can, you know, center mass majority of these tanks, you still want to know even if you, you know, get into a situation of where, you know, this won't pin them like that. You definitely want to know where the weak spots are. And as you can see right here, once we shoot M900 to T90M in that same exact kind of area, it's not going to pin and then the T90 would be able to kill me very easily. So the way that you'd want to actually aim with this thing is you want to go for the driver's patch right here. Pretty much every single time that's going to be a one hit whenever you hit the tank itself. And you know the lower plate as well can also be a pretty good shot to go for. And if it all comes down to it, the best thing to do against these types of vehicles is actually just to breach them. Because if you breach them, majority of the time they will not be able to shoot back. So now we're in a challenger because why not? We have the rounds of 
L27, L26, as well as L23, and we're going to be looking at the wonderful Leopard series of tanks whenever it comes to War Thunder. So we have a 2i7, we have a 122B PLSS, and then we have a 2i6. So really the differences between these variants of the Leopards is, well for one, this one has the weakest gun out of both of these. But at the same time, these two over here have really good hole armor, and this one does not, as you can see right there. The 2A6 has really bad hole armor. You can basically shoot it pretty much anywhere up in this area, and it will go through. And as we can see, if we go for like that same position right there, you're not able to pin it, which is something that is completely different compared to the 2A6. So the way that I preferably like to kill leopards, I mean, as we can see, we tested with 2A7 as well. The way that I like to kill leopards is I go for two two areas. So if I know it's a 2A6, if I know I'm just facing Germany and Sweden is not on the enemy team, or I know it's not a 2A7, this is definitely one of the easiest ways to go for. Just go for where the hole actually comes down to make it a little bit flatter and just shoot for that area. Now, whenever it comes to the PLSS, there's actually two ways you can go. So you can either go very, very low whenever it comes to actually pinning it. As we can see right there, that one even bounced. But you can go very, very low and you can actually pin in this area right here. I know it says that it's red. I'm not really sure why, but you can definitely go for the driver and as well as ammo if they're actually storing it there. But majority of time, people will take out the ammo if they're playing, you know, a PLSS. So you might have to do that and maybe just like mobility kill it. Now, the other spot that is the most reliable spot for me at least to go for is go for the gun breach. Gun breach pretty much every time will be able to kill this thing. It's not that huge of an issue if the gun breach can actually pin it. So definitely for me at least go for gun breach and you'll e either at least knock it out or you might actually get a kill because of all the crew being in the turret. Same thing goes with the Leopard 2 7 right here. Definitely you can go for the slower plate and try to get something. But majority of the time I would just go for the turret uh, cheeks right here and just go through the breach. Because it's the easiest spot to actually kill a Leopard in. And to me at least these are the strongest tanks within the top tier. They have the least amount of weak spots whenever it comes after shooting them. You know, the Leopard 2A6 definitely is an odd one out. But the PLSS, it's very hard to actually get, you know, a weak spot actually on this tank, especially if it's bushed up and all that sort of stuff. And as well as the 2A7. They're, they're really strong for what they are, and they can do really, really good stuff. But yeah, overall, go for the lower play if you're able to see that. But majority of the time, I would just go for the gun breach because the gun breach will at least be able to, you know, annihilate the ability for them to shoot back. So that's the big thing with that. Go for gun breach, but everywhere else, I would say is just not a huge, you know, area to actually go for on the leopard. So now we're looking at the Challenger 3, which is basically the same thing as this thing. So the Challenger, it's a piece of junk. You can shoot it there. A T3045 can even pin that. It's not a huge, like, you know, thing to actually be able to pin the lower portion of this. But the thing is, you have really good turret cheeks, but you also have a really bad breach. So pretty much anything can pin this area as well. You'll get cannon breach majority of time. You'll play this thing like you're playing Repair Thunder, where you just want to repair your breach over and over, and that's basically how you play the Challenger 3. As you know, also with the Challenger 3, you have the weak spot on the right side of the breach, where basically your ammo is just you no know, exposed. So, yeah, GG, good luck, you know, not getting one shot every time someone shoots you at the right side of your breach. Yes, I know, it's sad, Challenger. But at the same time, that's how you kill a Challenger. It's very, very simple. Okay, so now we're at China. So China is a really interesting nation whenever it comes to their weak spots because for some reason, they just have like a lower plate that is really bad. Like the lower plate of the Chinese tanks are just extremely bad. They're very similar to stuff like T-72s, but I mean, I don't know. The lower plate is just so bad compared to the T-72s. It seems like it's at a shallower of an angle and as well as it just seems like it is way bigger and as you can see from the screenshot it just doesn't have any composite on the bottom of the tank so it is definitely a spot that you can go for especially IFVs shooting at this lower portion right here can actually go through the tank with like their APFSDS it depends on what really happens but really it's kind of just the same way that you kill T-72s you can go for the driver's hatch but the tri driver's hatch is really trolly like as you can see right here we're getting a lot of areas which just say red you know, especially if they're bushed up and all that sort of things, it's going to be very hard to just see where this driver's hatch is and actually just kill it. But it is one spot that you can actually shoot for. But for me at least, I just would go for the gun breach again, make sure the gun breach is out, and then, you know, attack it again wherever you need to. Maybe just go for the lower plate and then get the rest of the crew. 
because like these T-72s as well as these uh, Chinese tanks, they only have three crews, so they're not really a huge, you know, crew to actually get rid of. So definitely, that would be my preferred way to get rid of the Chinese tanks when it comes to the VTs as well as the Type 99s. So the next one on the list is the wonderful Leclerc. The Leclerc has seen brighter days within War Thunder, and I definitely think that it is one of the best MBTs back in the day. But now, it's very sad of what it is. I mean, it basically just gets pretty much nuked every single time we get shot. I don't believe this thing actually even has spawn liners. It just has very easy weak spots to go by. I mean, like literally you can shoot anywhere on this tank with just JM-33 and you're able to pin it. So the Leclerics are not a huge like threat, at least to me, whenever it comes to top tier. I rarely ever see them. You have the lower plate, you have this portion, then you have the turret. You can just really shoot anywhere that you want to. And majority of time you will pin whatever tank that you shoot at it with. So now we have Italy with the Ariete, the PSO variant. The Ariete is just sad. I mean, it's probably the worst top tier MBT in the game. It basically has no armor. I mean, as you can see right here, even though the like arcade aimer has been bugged this whole video of showing spots where it shouldn't be able to pin, this whole lower plate can just be pinned every single time. There's a ton of ammo down there. You have the driver on the left side. Pretty much, you kill him, you kill three other crew members. And this thing is overall just sad. It doesn't have turret to do anything. As you can see right there, it pinned a turret. I mean, I don't really know why you play the Ariete's in 2024. It kind of seems like a tank that is way past its time because the only reason you played it in the past was because it had really good rounds and it had the best gun in the game. But now, that goes down there to the Leopards and this thing has just been lost to worth in a history and really doesn't have a you know big weak spot that you mentioned about because the whole tank itself is just a weak spot so the next tank on the list is the type 10 for japan and as well as the type 90s they basically don't really have much armor whenever it comes to tanks themselves really the only thing that you need to know about these things is don't shoot here it's because if you shoot there you won't be able to actually pin it it's just like a little strip most of the time people have it pushed up but basically just take the headlights, don't shoot in this area at all. As you can see, it does not pin at all. The only thing that killed that track was my APFSDS like dart things. But yeah, if you want to shoot the lower plate, you have to get, definitely go lower on the Type 10. The Type 90, which is the thing that we're playing now, is basically just a Leopard 2A4. Um, mainly all of the rounds will be able to pin it within War Thunder now. This thing is a glass cannon and so is the Type 10. But the Type 10 does have some little like troll spots that you're not able to really you know pin it in, which is kind of a good thing. So, yeah, the Type 10, it definitely has more armor than a Type 90, but still, it's not heavily armored when it comes to things. It's basically, the round accidentally hit this spot, so it's going to bounce, it's not going to pin. That's that's how the Type 10 basically plays in War Thunder. So now we're looking to the Merkava Mark IVM. This thing basically doesn't have any armor as well. It does have a little bit on the turret, but the hull of the tank itself can be pinned by pretty much anything. But the huge difference between the Merkava is, is that a lot of the rounds get stuck on the transmission, they get stuck on the engine, and they do not go into the crew compartment and actually hurt the enemy. But the thing about it is, whenever you're at this BR now where you're shooting really, really potent APFSDS rounds, majority of the time those rounds are going to go through the engine go through you know to the crew compartment and actually kill the tank itself so it's not really a huge benefit of shooting like on this left side like if you draw a line from the barrel like draw down and go left i wouldn't really ever shoot in this spot unless i just know i have like a really good apfsds the majority of the time i'd go for the right side so you get some crew members if i'm not able to see the turret completely but if i'm able to see the turret i mean you can pin it and everything as you can see right there it doesn't pin but gun breach, definitely the same spot as, you know, the other tanks in the game. Ba mainly whenever it comes to War Thunder, if you can see gun breach within these top tier tanks, it is probably the best place to actually shoot these vehicles because it spalls a lot. There's most likely not going to be any spall liners there. And then also, you know, it's just a good little thing. I mean, as we see right there, the Merkava really does not have that much armor. It just really matters on where you shoot it because if you shoot it right there, it's going to get some of the spalling stopped by the engine and as well as transmission. So if you like these types of videos, remember to like and sub to the channel. And if you want to see a video on other weak spots whenever it comes to the lower tiers of War Thunder, definitely check out that video now and I'll see you guys in the next War Thunder video.